This is a problem about the Earth being struck by an asteroid. And it relates to this idea of the asteroid that hit the Earth and caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. What was it that caused the problem? And I've heard some folks say that the issue was this. I've heard some folks say, oh, the asteroid comes in, it's moving really, really fast, hits the Earth, slams into it, and the Earth recoils, okay? And then the Earth subsequently recoils. So here's our situation. Asteroid comes in, hits the Earth. Subsequently, the Earth plus the asteroid are moving together at a speed that's enough that it knocks the Earth out of its orbit or something like that. So I've heard people suggest that this was the problem. Basically, like a pool ball coming in and hitting another ball, boom, the two of them move off together, knocks the Earth out of its orbit. Not so, as we'll see with this problem. As a matter of fact, that's alluded to in the problem statement because the issue is that the, this impact throws up so much dust, not that the Earth has a huge recoil speed. So before we start the problem, we're going to expect that this speed is small. Okay, we're going to say that initially. We expect the final speed of the Earth plus the asteroid to be tiny because we don't think this was the issue. But we can do a problem to solve just how big it is. And this is an example of an inelastic collision. And we've seen examples of these in the chapter. Okay, it's an inelastic collision. There's no bounce. The asteroid doesn't hit and rebound. It hits, sticks, the Earth plus the asteroid move off together. And the basic way we're going to solve this problem is by using conservation of momentum. And to solve conservation of momentum problems, we prepare by doing a before and after picture. Okay, so before and after picture looks like this. Before the collision, okay, we have just the asteroid moving at a very, very high speed. And the speed given in the problem here, 4 times 10 to the 4th meters per second, that's 40 kilometers per second. That's a very, very high speed, okay? So we have an initial speed, but for now I'm just going to call that V sub A. That's the speed of the asteroid. And the mass of the asteroid, M sub A, hits the Earth, mass m sub e, that's my before picture. The after picture looks like this. In the after situation, the Earth and the asteroid move off together at a common speed, which I'm just going to call vf, okay, the final speed at which they move off. But the mass is now the combined mass of the asteroid plus the Earth, so it's ma plus me. Now we can write down an expression for the momentum before, which we'll call PI, that's my initial momentum, and for the final momentum, which we call PF. Okay, PI is just the mass of the asteroid times the speed of the asteroid. PF is the combined mass, MA plus ME, times VF. Okay, that's my momentum after the collision. Now we can equate these two to each other because the initial momentum is the same as the final momentum. We've chosen a frame as we were directed to do in which the Earth was initially at rest, but that would apply in any frame of reference. This one just makes the solution straightforward. And the solution is just this. We take the initial momentum and set it equal to the final momentum, and so we have MA times VA is equal to MA plus ME times VF times our final speed. Now take a look at this. We can rewrite it. What we're looking for is VF. So we'll rewrite it this way. VF is equal to VA times MA, the mass of the asteroid, over MA plus ME, the sum of the two masses. Okay? Now the numbers are known because we're given the mass of the asteroid in the problem statement. The mass of the Earth is given inside the back cover of the textbook, okay? We know as well the initial speed of the asteroid, okay? So we know everything on this side of the equation. I can put in numbers, and if I do that, I can calculate a final speed. And the final speed that I get is 6.7 times 10 to the negative eighth meters per second. And that is a tiny speed indeed, okay? It's a very, very small speed. But it seems even tinier if we do an assessment to compare this to the speed of the Earth around the Sun. Now the speed of the Earth around the Sun 
is this. It's just circular motion. So it's 2 pi r divided by t. The radius of the Earth around the sun is 1.50 times 10 to 11th meters, okay? That's the radius of the Earth's orbit. The period of the Earth's orbit, of course, is just one year, okay? And one year is 3.15 times 10 to the seventh seconds. So we end up with the speed of the Earth around the sun of 3.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. And that means that this speed that we calculated here as a fraction of the speed of the Earth around the sun is 2.2 times 10 to the negative tenth percent. That is quite a small percentage indeed, okay? And so we see this speed is a tiny, tiny percentage of the Earth's speed around the Sun. The recoil speed is very small. And this makes sense because the asteroid is big. I mean, it's 10 to the 13th kilograms, but not big compared to the mass of the Earth. And so we expect a final recoil speed that's quite small. And in fact, that's what we find, particularly in comparison to the speed of the Earth around the Sun. And that makes sense, because the asteroid didn't knock the Earth out of its orbit. What happened was it threw up so much dust that it blocked the Sun. So it was the effect of the impact, specifically the effect that the energy that the asteroid possessed when it hit the Earth went into kicking up dust and warming things up. And that's what caused the problem, not the disruption of the Earth's orbit. And this makes sense because we know that the Earth has been hit by asteroids many, many times, but its orbit has stayed stable with respect to the time. So this wasn't like a game of cosmic pool. It was a game of kicking up lots of dust and blocking out the sun. It's an inelastic collision. The kinetic energy of the motion is converted into mostly thermal energy. This is an issue which we'll take a look in the next chapter when we consider energy.